How's it going? I'm Ira Golden and welcome to my vlog. Alright, okay. So, at the end of the last one, my last sort of talk, talking about the uh, experience I've had um, going with Kindle Direct Publishing this time and my excitement about the fact I'm releasing. Uh, or have just released at this point. <laughs> the point in time you're seeing this video, I've just released it. At the point in time that I'm filming this video, it's still about a week ago. <laughs> so I'm filming this right after the one that I've just filmed, um, the one from last week that you guys just saw last week. Okay. <laughs> anyway, at the end of that one, I said that I would actually be talking about the colours I see in terms of like plot and characters. Um, and stuff like that because I've not done a very good job of doing that so far because every single time I try I go to talk about uh, the colours I see I start tangenting off onto two, two other sort of related things but I start tangenting off onto other things um so the colours I see is much more on the fantasy side than Hyena Boy was I mean the Hyena Boy the magical realism side of it was much more in the in the background, it was more hinted and, and implied, and okay, there were a couple of elements which were kind of, well, is it, you know, the character is uh, hallucinating, or is this like a real thing? Um, and that sort of uncertainty there um, was sort of how the magical realism kind of played out in, in that one. Um, the colours I see, no, no, you, you were hit in the face with the fantasy element <laughs> right from the off. <laughs> Well, I say right from the off, um, you, you get this sort of little opening um, before you kind of officially meet Zell, um, which kind of alludes to, to certain things and certain things that sort of go on and, and uh, get built upon throughout the story. Um, but yeah, you, you very early on, you're, you're aware that, you know, uh, Zell's character does have a gift. Um, I'm not going into too many details as to what that gift is, but the book is called The Colours I See, so there might be a little bit of a hint there. <laughs> um, so when I originally started writing, or when I originally thought, okay, there's going to be a second book in this series, and I've, I've mentioned this before, um, it, I was sort of coming towards one of the last edits of High in a Boy, um, and I just, you know, I felt very much there was this other story going on in the background um, uh, with, with Zell's character in particular um, that, you know, was, was kind of interesting and kind of needed to be explored and kind of might have been a bit sort of self fangirly in a way. Um, and I, I do joke about this with a particular friend of mine. This is the friend that, that does the covers for my books. Um, about how I was basically writing a fanfic for the Hyena Boy. <laughs> um, and it's kind of a joke that sort of persisted a little bit. Um, when I sort of set out and, and, and started writing it, I was like, there are certain things I know are going to happen because this is, you know, happening in the background of, of Hyena Boy and I've got that to sort of use as a jumping off point for like how things were ordered and you know where we go with the plot and like filling in blanks um, from hiding the boy that you, you don't necessarily get. And when I sort of started writing it there were certain things that I thought I knew what was going on but then as I was writing it I was sort of like well it doesn't make sense that you know based on where the characters are at this point that uh, this hasn't happened yet and like, why why is it taking so long for, for things to sort of fall into place if that's the actual order that's going on um, so as I was writing it I realised the context behind those scenes were different. The scenes perfectly well to play out the exact same way but suddenly the motivations behind it had, had changed and had altered and that was you know quite exciting and, and, and quite surprising and there are various other things that sort of came in that I wasn't necessarily expecting um, that you know as I sort of refined the story and, and and this that and the other that I kind of uh, I kind of realised that actually this is you know a lot better and a lot stronger in actually 
is about so much more than I, I originally thought it was, which, you know, if, if I'm going to complete the joke, was a shit thick. <laughs> she said um so the colors i see at the heart of the colors i see there is a love story so zell's story at its very heart is a love story um but there is so much that kind of goes on around around the outside of that that it's not it's more than just a love story there's 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 so many elements it's, a, it's definitely a mature, maturation story as well. You, you see Zell's character kind of grow up throughout the story and, and his views on the world change. He doesn't, yeah, he, he begins as kind of this optimistic little character, um, sort of very, very strong in his, his sort of desires and his, and his beliefs uh, to, to do good um, or to do slightly heroic, <laughs> heroic inverted commas, um, kind of things, uh, to very much be the saviour of his friends, that's, that's his kind of initial kind of outlook, his, his initial kind of view of the, the sort of situation that he's in, but as he kind of grows up, he kind of realises in a lot of ways he's, he's powerless, he, he doesn't, you know, have what it takes, um, or what he needs, necessarily to, to change the situations that he sees going on around him. Um, he very much starts to sort of to sort of doubt himself and and you know not necessarily know what the right thing to do is and a lot of the decisions that he he ends up making right or wrong and he's a, he's a very flawed character. There are perfectly there are so many moments where he's he's either being a bit bratty or <laughs> or he's making really stupid decisions. Um, based on what he, he thinks is this inside knowledge that his, his gift has given him. Um, but he's not necessarily making the correct decision because he's not necessarily understanding the, the information that he's been presented with or not necessarily understanding the full context of the situation. So he's making decisions based on what he believes is right, but actually in context or out of context um, might be completely stupid decisions or might be the wrong decisions. But he's just one person you know, trying to, to feel his way in, in a very confusing world um, when there, there's lots of stuff going on. And, you know, he, as I said, he starts off as very, very optimistic, very, very certain of this idea that he can help the people around him because his gift gives him this insight. So therefore, his gift must allow him to sort of save these people and, and, and make sure these people have better lives than they would otherwise. Um, and then, as I say, he sort of like goes through this sort of period of kind of doubting himself and he becomes more realistic about what he can and can't do, um, about who he is as a person. And I said, it's, it's a, in that way, it's sort of a, a, a kind of a maturation story in, in terms of his, his own sort of, you know, personal growth. Um, but then there, there are like elements of, you know, the, the change, in the change in the nature of the relationship he has with his parents um, that kind of snuck up on me um, as to sort of how big an impact that would end up having on the story. Because again, that was one of those elements where I was kind of like, OK, that's endgame stuff, that's endgame stuff, that's endgame stuff. And then I realised like about partway through that, no, his parents... If, if I take the, the idea that his parents are these people, then actually the idea of the, this moment happening a bit sooner makes more sense and actually opened up a lot more possibilities for the story as well. Um, I actually really like his parents. <laughs> when I initially started writing them, um, just based on like little bits of information you have about them from, from Hyena Boy and the Zell's dad does make a brief appearance in, in Hungry Boy as well. Um, just from that very, very brief amount of information, you kind of got this idea that they were a little bit stuck up, wealthy, um, more interested in making sure that their son sort of goes along and pursues the, the kind of life that they want him to have, rather than necessarily the kind of life that he wants himself to have. Um, but when you actually, when, when I sort of like reached the end and as I was going back and editing through it, um, I was adding in a lot more elements that made them more complex than that because they were more complex than that. 
you know, the that sort of first impression that I had of them based from, from the hyena boy and stuff changed a lot. I ended up really liking his parents. <laughs> his parents are genuinely amazing people. God, are they flawed. They, I mean, if I say that, um, Zell makes a lot of stupid decisions. His parents make an equal number of stupid decisions. Um, but they're sort of, and they're not necessarily even coming from like a kind of different angle. Um, I mean, if you kind of distill what Zell kind of wants, um, to the idea that he is trying to protect those he cares about rather than save those he cares about, he's exactly like his parents. And all the stupid decisions that he makes is it's a lot about, you know, trying to protect those around him, trying to do what's best for those around him. And that's exactly who his parents are. They make a lot of stupid decisions based on this idea of, of trying to protect their son. Um, and it all sort of like comes together. And when you kind of reach the end and you have this moment at the end, um, it does feel like it's earned. It does very much feel like it's own. And, you know, it's, yeah, I, I can't go into too much detail about what any of this stuff is because, you know, we don't want to make spoilers. Um, I'm just trying to in, get people enthusiastic about the story elements that I'm enthusiastic about. And that's not even touching on the love story, which I'm like, the, that's the whole reason why I wrote this to begin with. But, like, you know, all of these, these additional things that kind of go on. Um, around Zell and inform his character and change his character and help his character grow up. I mean, yes, when you first meet his character at the very start of the book, he's like four. <laughs> and it does take a while before he kind of gets into like the, the teenage stuff. Um, but, you know, it, it don't don't be put off of the idea that, you know, you're starting off with this four-year-old character because you are watching him grow up. And, He's definitely, I think, the first of his friends to start swearing, or at least start swearing on a regular, <laughs> on a regular basis. Um, and it, it it all sort of comes very much down to the, his his own personal mantra, uh, which he he does kind of get from the the mom of one of the other boys, um, which is there's nothing wrong in being different. It's wrong that people think there is. Um, and this is coming from the character who is different to a lot of people around him in a lot of different ways. So, you know, you know, there are various different levels in which this character is going to be different from those around him. Um, and he recognises that they're not little differences necessarily either. They're, they're things that do affect how he interacts with the world um, and, and how he feels about the world and, and stuff like that. Um, but again, I don't want to go too much into that because, you know, the, the blurb does a good job for me and I want people to read the blurb and be interested in reading the book. Um, and, you know, even like when I was deciding how, um, what information to kind of put onto the blurb, um, I had to very much pick sort of an age for Zell to be um, in terms of his tone on, on, this, on this blurb. Um, and apart from like, I think one detail, um, which was kind of necessary to sort of fill in all the all the and well, necessary in order to create enough interest because of all the all the bits and pieces that are going on. Um, all of it is set in like a very distinct point um, in in Zell's development. Therefore, has to sound like that distinct point in Zell's development, um, but. In, in, in terms of like how optimistic he is at that kind of point. Um, there's sort of like, it has to sort of be before a number of these bad things have, have happened that, that sort of change um, what's to come and, and how things kind of unfold. And it also has to be before the one really good thing happens. <laughs> I say one really good thing. One of the, one of the really good things that happen, um, which again impacts and influences how the story sort of goes from there. So it's sort of at this, this sort of point where it's on the verge of all, like the blurb is written sort of like on the verge of all of these things happening. So it's not at the very start point um, where, you know, where you kind of first meet Zell um, and it's not at, you know, all the like the really big major dramatic things that sort of happen after that point. I'm not saying that big things haven't happened before that point. Some things have happened before that point. <laughs> 
I mean, you do, you do kind of progress through quite quickly, I think, um, to the more sort of dramatic stuff. Um, yeah, 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 I think you do. Because um, obviously, very much with Hyena Boy's story, you got a lot of the stuff happening when he was, uh, he, he kind of focuses more on the teenage years. Um, whereas now you do get a, a larger chunk of the stuff that kind of happens before that, and the kind of stuff that sort of, fills in the blanks as, uh, of, of, you know, what their relation, you know, what relationship between these four friends. Because like, that's a thing with the never rating books. I mean, I say, quite often say that it's um, it's about the, the four boys and Tellura, but the more I kind of do uh, the next two books in the series, the more it's kind of, you know, what, it's really about the four core, the core four boys. It's, it's their story. And yes, Tallulah does play a fairly substantial part, um, definitely in Hyena Boy, definitely in The Colours I See, not so much in the other two. Not so much in the other two. Um, that's not because they, they necessarily drifted away from her, it's just how she can impact the story has has changed. And she's definitely around, she's definitely somebody they, they keep in contact with regularly, they definitely you know, care about a lot. Um, but in terms of how their story kind of develops and how their story kind of how uh, kind of grows, she's not a major player, um, whereas she is in in High the Boy and the Colors I See. So I've gone from kind of thinking about it as being the core four and Laura to being these books about are about the core four. Um, and if High the Boy is this kind of almost add on. <laughs> <laughs> almost an add-on to the colours I see. Um by the colours I see is, is very much this, this sort of focal of the story. Um and yeah, I, I think the colours I see, yes, Telura does play, as I said, a very major role in it, but I think you get a very strong sense of what these these narration books are about, which is the core four, and the relationships they have with each other and um how they relate to each other and the relationships they have with, with other people in the world uh, around them, whether it's all four of them that have those connections um, to those certain people, whether it's just one or two of them that have those connections to those certain people. Um, it, it doesn't sort of it doesn't sort of matter because at the end of the day these four boys always come back together. They always come back together. I mean even even though the third book, they sort of, certainly to begin with, feel like they've drifted apart a little bit um, because of circumstances. By the end of the book, they've, they've, they've come back together again. Um, they've come back together again in that sort of uh, firmness of the, the bond that these four, these four boys have with each other and the strong sense of friendship that these four boys have with each other. Is very much the heart of the the Never Eaten series. Um, yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. So it's really hard talking about a book without like talking about a book. <laughs> Don't know if you realise that. Um, so I hope what I've sort of said has at least intrigued some of you. Um, all gotten some of you like a little bit excited about maybe reading like fingers crossed you're a little bit excited about maybe reading <laughs> um as it is right now i don't actually know i haven't actually thought of the topic for the next vlog so i'm just going to leave that up in the air for a minute um so i've, I've got time to sort of decide between now and the time I need to film it, exactly what that one is going to be about. Because um, I, I just haven't, <laughs> I haven't thought that far ahead yet. It will be whatever it needs to be about at the time that I come to film it. Um, whereas right now I'm, I'm sort of like, my head is so full of book is releasing soon, or for you guys, book has just released. Um, but I can't really sort of think that sort of far ahead at the moment. <laughs> Anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed this one. I hope you're looking forward to whatever the next vlog happens to be about. And I will see you next time. See ya. <laughs> if you've enjoyed this video, feel free to check out some of my others. And if you like what you see, please like and subscribe. 
See ya.